Gloria is the focus of my documentary. I met Gloria years ago when I answered a Craigslist post and we became fast friends. She gave me a tour of her property and we bonded over being two types of people that were cut from the same cloth, meaning that we were both engaged in living life to the fullest, being creative and personal expression. Well, Gloria's kind of famous where she's from for making these little tin men and other creatures. So I asked her if I could do a small documentary that was informal, and that is exactly what this documentary is about. Well, this is my little chapel that I built in 2007. And uh, my son-in-law just replaced the door here last year because it fell apart. Most of it's built out of old boards, so. And uh, I built this little pew out of an old board I pulled out of a burn pile. And the back is part of an old futon. And this was an old sewing machine cabinet I got at a yard sale. And I did the windows. They're plexiglass. I do the pictures and then I use a, it's a paint that you paint on and it's, you can feel it. And it never seems to fade, any of these windows. I've done, uh, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, five windows in here. And when I built this, uh, I had my three great granddaughters helping me. One was only probably half a year old. <laughs> the other two were like two and three years old. I went in a vintage shop and there was uh, a metal thing that looked like a, I wasn't sure, it looked like a steeple, maybe for the top of a steeple. So I bought it and kept it and sat around here for a year. And then a neighbor that was moving gave me a four by eight shipping crate. And uh, I took that thing apart with all the plywood and everything. And so I cut most of it out of the plywood from the shipping crate and used the two by twos and leftover wood we had from building the part-time home that we had built here. And uh, it turned out to be a cute little chapel. And uh, the door has been replaced. Uh, my It finally fell apart. My Son-in-law rebuilt the door last year. So that's the only thing that's been replaced. Maybe I've painted it a few times and roofed it. But the little metal thing is the top of the steeple. So it, it had a purpose. So these statues I bought at a sale one time. And this one, I believe, was for... Uh, Kayla, my great granddaughter, and this one is for, for uh, uh, McKenna, my other granddaughter, uh, great granddaughter, and this is for the the youngest of the, the three, uh, Sydney. Uh, we've used it for oh different things. Kids love to go in it and, and see the chapel, and uh, we've um, I had one woman that's come up and had a dog memorial in it twice and uh, of course the kids had chicken weddings and I can weddings and things and you know for that reason and we've had a lot of bunny rabbit memorials and cat and dog memorials several occasions where either a pet has died or you know somebody just wants to come up and have a moment and she opens up her little chapel to those people to come in and and just enjoy um, it for its simple uh, value <laughs> it's just a relaxing place to go in i know that it has a new door um, but she apparently built the, the original thing to its from you know, to its what it is today I've had some private prayer time in there myself, and it's a good place to meditate. And uh, it's just a quiet little place.
And uh, I did have the yellow brick road here, but it's kind of filled in in the past. And Bruce and Lila, my daughter and son-in-law, redone it. And uh, this is the Wizard of Oz garden and the scarecrow. And then the lions right here. Got him at a yard sale. And uh, I used to have my pig over here. I had a pot belly pig in this little building. Bruce has redone the building because the building is, <laughs> was falling apart. And he just, he just redid the building so my daughter can use it for uh, growing things in the winter in there. This was a... Uh, actually a two-hole outhouse that I bought at a yard sale and it's on two big logs and the man that I bought it from moved it here and slid it down there and uh, the windows I got from an old barn that we had taken down and I took out the two-holer of course and uh, turned it into a little playhouse, put windows in it. And uh, then I built the ice cream parlor over here on the side of it. It's kind of a playhouse now. Uh, this was an ice cream parlor. The kids' names are on there, the great grandchildren, but now they've kind of grown out of it. So it's kind of dilapidated now. <laughs> A lot of the things that are hanging on the outhouse were actually hanging on it, and I got those with it. I've added a lot of things to it in the past, like the owls and the various things that are hanging there. <laughs> so we did have a boat barn here in the past, and then... Uh, I did my cans in there for quite a while, and it was too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer, and so I traded that to my my daughter to be her little schoolhouse after she retired from school, and uh, Bruce built me a little place to do my cans down under my carport, so it didn't have all this porch on it or anything then. You want to come inside? He did a great job and he did this all in about a month. <laughs> he put a whole loft in it and there's a staircase behind here. He built a staircase and, and uh, it was built so she could do her school and she did her she finished school, her last year of school, before she retired, right at that desk there. <laughs> oh, this is the swing my son-in-law built. And, uh, boy, the leaves are falling early this year. It's only August and they're already falling. It shouldn't fall for another month or two yet. This is all my daughter's gardens here. That's a variegated maple. It's a beautiful tree. I were at exercise class in Battleground, Washington, and we started talking about where we had been in the past. And she said that she lived in Battleground for, you know, a number of years. And I told her we had just moved here, and that was about ten years ago. And she said, um, "Where did you move from?" And I said, "Well, we lived in Hawaii for thirty-eight years." And she says, "Oh, I lived in Hawaii too. Where did you live?" Um, I lived on Oahu, and she said, oh, about where? And I said, on the windward side, well, about where? And I said, Kailua, 
uh, what street? And we realized we lived across the canal from each other and never met the whole time we lived in Hawaii, which was probably a span of about six years. Um, she had been in real estate and we actually bought our house from the realtor <laughs> that she worked for, but we hadn't still hadn't met until we came to Battleground. So it was a really fun, I mean, experience just seeing our eyes light up that we should have known each other. And she said, well, we had a, we had a boat that we used to take up and down, a, one, a pontoon boat that we used to take up and down the canal. She said, you should have come with us. I said, well, I didn't know you. <laughs> so that was, the, uh, that was the realization that we, we had, that's how we met. It's a little chapel garden I built. I haven't gotten out here to work too much. I can't do a whole lot of yard work anymore. And I built a little trellis out of some wood I got at a yard sale <laughs> to plant a rose on. So we'll go back in the fences. The dog could jump over, but he never does. And uh, this is my rose garden that I really enjoy. And uh, and most of this is built up from an old patio that chunks, and I put pot soil, potting soil over it and planted all these things in here and built a little pond. And this is one of my son's creations. It's a spear with a ball inside that has a pyrite in the center of it, and it turns, and this water's on the outside. It's funny when you watch a hummingbird come down here, and he sits here, and then he'll slide down, then he'll go back up, and then he'll slide down, and he'll sit up here, and what the heck? What's going on with this? <laughs> So um, this is all some of my plantings. I love to work in the yard. I, my plan is to fall over dead in the yard someday and then I'll be happy. Future plans, well, let's see, I'm 93. I don't know, if I get tired of the eye cans, I'll have to think of something else to do. I've been thinking a lot about that lately. I've been gonna write a book all my life, but all I've done is bits and pieces of it here and there and everywhere. So. I don't know if that's ever going to get accomplished. Maybe if it pours all year or something and I can't go outside, I might do that. But I don't know what the rest of my life is. It'll just happen like everything else has happened in our lives. I don't plan anything. I don't have anything on my bucket list. Sometimes I think about my life. In the 93 years, I've done a lot of things. I was once a newspaper reporter and things, but I started when I was 12 with that. I edited a paper on the San Bernardino Mountains. I've just had a good time. I went into real estate. I've done all kinds of things. We've built houses. We've met a lot of people along the way and a lot of friends. Unfortunately, I've lost a lot of friends in the past because I've outlived them. But now I have a lot of friends. And this is just my little shed to store stuff in here. Seasons is the name we named the property when we first bought this property. And I named it because our lives have changed so much throughout the years. And I always call them the different seasons of our lives.
says, if it's to be, it's up to me. And uh, you have to just think about things. And uh, I think they need to try. People say, I can't do this or I can't do that. Uh, but I think they can if they put their mind to it. I think everybody, everybody is a little creative. They just don't find it, maybe. So this is my little shop. And I will go inside. This is where I do the canning. Come on inside here. And this is where I sit and work right over here with my silly little tools. My hand drill and my newest thing is a battery powered rivet gun which doesn't take any uh, compressor anymore. And this is one I was going to make. I haven't decided what the body is going to be yet, but this is, is going to be a head. Now, it could be that way with the eyes here and the mouth, probably. When I'm making a can or whatever I'm doing creating, I'm just thinking about the next step, what I'll do in the next step and how I'll put together, how it's going to all fit together. and. Uh, I don't know. I'm always happy because I enjoy doing it. Just silly things that I like to do. This will be a body. I think I'm going to put a cat head on this and little arms like this. And uh, I'll make them out of brushes, little metal paint brushes. And this is a body. This will be a head when I get the eyes and the nose. He's already got ears on it, so it makes it really nice. That's a good head. Uh, I'm always short of heads. I got lots of bodies here. And these are all bodies around here. These, um, well, let's see. This will make a cute body because that's an old collector's tin. That'll be a head when I get it done. That might be that way, or I might take it apart and put it that way. It was just fun to earn some money from them. <laughs> I didn't think people would buy them, but uh, they did. And I give a lot of them away to friends and family. Of course, family has them all over their property. And uh, I do sell them, and it's fun to sell them. People come up to the house and get them because I don't drive anymore. I'm 93, and I gave up driving two years ago, something like that. And uh, I put it on uh, Facebook Marketplace, and people come drive up here to, uh, to buy the cans. I've gone to several uh, shows, uh, Art in the Garden at the Brush Prairie Botanical Gardens, just below here. And uh, I did that for about three or four years. And uh, I've... I don't go anymore because I don't drive anymore to get there. But the uh, Marshall House sale that the uh, a group has invited me down there, and they only have five vendors. Otherwise, they have a big geranium sale. And uh, I, w I did go to that this year, but my friends had to drive me. So I don't go to the sales anymore. This is my drill press. Oh, it was my husband's. I have a lot of his old equipment that he had. And uh, these are my best arms. They're uh, pineapple, little pineapple cans. And they're good because it's heavy tin. And uh, I'm going to turn this on and drill some holes because I have to have a hole for the two holes in this one, four holes. What will happen now is uh, the wires will go in here, and then I'll have to have hands here. I cut the hands out of metal uh, tin pie plates and things. I have to cut each little hand and finger. Those get wired through there. And these are all waiting to be drilled here. I drink a lot of pineapple juice. <laughs> but um, this is still more stuff.
like I say, I got too many bodies and not enough heads. But uh, it'll be fun anyway. I can hardly wait to make something. This... Can you ever switch them out with your actual head? <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> uh, I found this, and I've only made one of these so far. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but it's a, it's a garlic press, and it's going to make a wonderful bird. Makes a great bird, and I've got a picture of that somewhere. And here's another one that makes a great bird. This is going to be a bird by the time I get the eyes and the body and everything on it. And uh, it'll be a bird. This is a, a potato ricer. I don't think anybody uses these anymore. Anyway, I find them at sales every once in a while. And the more antique and old they are, the cuter they are. They're a little tricky to make, but they're fun. <laughs> Gloria's creativity on the property. Um, she, uh, she lives with her daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter, um, who all have their separate units here on the property. And um, I think it's, it, it's a really wonderful situation for her because she always has people around. So she, I don't think she ever feels lonely. And I think that's what's important uh, getting older. I think is having friends and or family that can be with you and, um, and keep your spirits up and keep you going. And I'll tell you, one, one thing that I thought was amazing about her was that she gave up her car on her own. She loved to drive. She loved to get out. But she realized there was a time where maybe she wasn't quite as right on driving. And she gave up her car on her own, which I think is something that we should all consider because it makes it so much easier on the family. So I, at that time, said, wherever you need to go, I'll be there. And I know her family and other family members are the same. So this is what I did to the carport when I don't drive anymore. And these are some of my characters here. The few here. Kitty cat up here. It's wine, wine tops. And uh, and this is what I have right now. I, I, they change all the time because I sell them or give them to friends and then they change. That's the Coca-Cola guy there. And this one. And uh, most of these are pretty vintage. You can't get them. They have to have the be painted in, not just the paper cover. These are all painted into the cans. And that, one time and uh, they're all different there's always something new to make and something <laughs> silly oh this guy here here's can you get all this uh, I won this fire hydrant at the home and garden show in Clark County one day one year about oh I don't know six or seven years ago they were giving out little tickets and if you they picked your name you won and I just happened to want win. It's a real fire hydrant. And so I had to build the well I had already built my big tin guy and uh, so I built the dog. He's got a leash and the dog's waiting on the fire hydrant here. <laughs> And I have these old, two old trunks that I have lots of cans in. Unfortunately, but all bodies, so I can figure out how to make a head out of some of them, but uh, most of these are bodies. These are cute. People bring these to me, or I get them at yard sales. I've got way too many bodies now. <laughs> I'll never get these all made. <laughs> But every once in a while I come out here and I find one special. And here's an old U-Band. That's a good one. Unless that's a paper. No, that's a that's into the metal. Yeah. There's an old MJB.
Well, at least I have these two trunks to keep some things in for when I do need them. schoolhouse I built was the first thing I built out of old fence boards. We used to have a little stairs coming down here, but we had to move it from when we built onto the farmhouse. I don't know what the answer It's been a long time since I've been in here. We did some storage stuff. They used to have it all fixed up with a little desk and everything. It's been a long time. I'm surprised there's nothing wild living in here. I'm going to look up. <laughs> anyway, it was fun to build this. Oh, here's my sign. This is from my... I thought this had thrown it out. I made this when I had a pig. And I had a little pig house over there. And I called him Wilbur. I made this little sign for him. So what you you learn after you know it all that counts. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for coming along with me on my little journey around my property and uh, learn to be creative. It really keeps you alive in your. Especially in your old age, you learn when you're young and you just keep going at it and doing different things. And uh, it's sure keeping me happy. Just doing my eye cans with smiling faces, they're all smiling, and it keeps me happy doing that. And uh, that's what you have to do keep happy. Thank you for coming. Bye.